everybody, welcome back to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360. He is Steve, Xbox Live Steve Ivich. And Russ, aka yours truly, has triumphantly returned from San Diego Comic Con Ground Zero in episode 131 today, July 22nd, 2019. We are going to catch up with each other, but before we dive right into the journey known as SDCC, there is, is an absolute metric ton to discuss, and so we're actually going to be breaking up this conversation into two episodes. The first one is going to be covering the first half of my Comic-Con experience, and then next week, you'll be able to listen to part two, and there's just an absolute, like I said, just there's so much to cover and discuss and really just geek out over that you will not want to miss either one of these parts. So anyway, another thing too, just doing some house cleaning really quick, is I want to apologize to you guys about uh, the, the slight tardiness in this episode getting out to you. The original plan, um, if you were listening last week, was that I was going to have this podcast episode be recorded while I was in San Diego with our good old friend Brad. However, Bradley fell ill somewhat with uh, a sudden case of laryngitis, which I believe he probably contracted from what we all know and love as the comic crud. Which you are probably going to get. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm pretty sprightly there, Steve. Mm. I don't know about that, Russ. Oh, wow. Wow. Can I get your autograph? I can't hear you. What's that, yeah. son? <laughs> I want your autograph. Can yeah. you speak louder? I think, you know, I think I am in the clear when it comes to the comic crud because I, I have not gotten sick. Typically in the past, if I did get something, it happened kind of like on the last day I was there. And as I got back, and all of a sudden I started feeling really ill. And so we'll see if, if, uh, Nothing occurs with without uh, without throughout. How about that? Throughout this week, then I think I'll be okay. You'll probably be a carrier of it and then give it to me and then I will get it. Well, Steve, I keep telling you to not French kiss me. But for some reason, you just uh, Russ, I like to play the French tickler. I don't French kiss you. I just like sticking my tongue in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> you have a wax fetish, don't you, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered why dogs sniffed ears. Then I tried it. Yeah. <laughs> and now I can't stop. Some people like candle wax burned on their skin. Steve just likes to lick it out of your ear. <laughs> I always say it's good to have a clean ear and nothing cleans better than a good old taste buddy tongue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 It's an acquired taste. Uh, 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 wait just a little bit longer. A little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to this week? Because I have not seen you for a week. And I'm curious to know what you have been up to. Not much. I will say that. I have not been doing much. I've been enjoying the peace and quiet. I will say that. <laughs> no offense, Russ. Um, but you liked having that little week off there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Ooh, no responsibility. Yeah, I should be doing something right now, but I'm not. <laughs> so I feel guilty and happy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. I have been watching Narcos, mm. Mexico. Getting through that, almost done. It's not, you know, it's not quite as good as the other Narcos. I'm going to say that. I really love the, the first two seasons. Uh, well, there's three seasons, Russ. I know. I have not watched the third season, well, Steve. There you go. Anyhow, you know who's in it? Is, I, no, I don't because I haven't yeah, seen you know, it yet. I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. I can't remember his name. But he is basically the, uh, the security guy from Ant-Man. You know how the, the dude who yes. has the stories, he's like, okay, this happened over here. That is, it. He's in it. He's like the main character. Uh-huh. And he's great in it. Well, he's great in a lot of things. Oh, I know, but this, this is a totally different role for him. Oh. A little more serious, a little more yeah. dramatic as yeah. opposed to being the plucky yeah. comedian. No, yeah, well, 
I mean, he was, and I think if I remember right, he was also in Shooter with Mark Wahlberg, if I'm not mistaken. I want to say, wasn't he in, he, wasn't he in a film with Jake Gyllenhaal as police officers? Or am I thinking of someone else? Mm, I'm not really sure about that one. I don't remember the name of that film. Anyway. Well, he's good. He's really he's good. He's a versatile actor. He's very good in Narcos. I would say all the different actors I have seen thus far, Steve, are quite good. Let's see. I also watched Only the Brave. Only the Brave. And who's in Only the Brave, Steve? Joshy Brolin. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if I've seen Only the Brave. Yeah, I'm sure you haven't, Russ. I don't know. So that one was about the uh, the hot shots. The, uh, you know, the, the little the firefighters who go out and they basically, if there's a wildfire, mm-hmm. they go out and they will basically do like controlled burns and they'll quarantine the fire. And so the fire will just burn itself out and that's that. So they, they, that's what they do. But they don't walk around with hoses and, and water and stuff there. They literally have like chainsaws and back hose and just stuff that, that kind of quarantines the fire and knocks some, some trees down and whatnot, cuts the grass. That's what they do. And then movie days basically takes place. There's like this crazy, hot, just out of control fire, unpredictable fire in Arizona. And uh, so Is this anyway, based on a true story? Yeah. Oh. It happened on planet Earth in the United States in Arizona. Interessante. And the names are correct. Beyond that, nobody knows. I see. But did you, <laughs> so you liked it? You thought it was fun? Yeah, it was good. It was definitely good. Did that come out last year? I believe it came out in 2017. Okay. Well, how did you come across that movie in particular? I saw previews from other movies that I was watching. And, um, of course. It's the whole, like, if you watch this, yeah. you might like that. <laughs> right. Plus, it, since I was watching a bunch of Avengers stuff with Endgame and whatnot, Judge Brolin, are we going to give it a shot? Yeah, I, I am quite the fan of... Mr. Brolin, the broster. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. I'm curious to see what he's going to do next. I know that he has, you know, he was very shrewd in uh, taking the role of Cable because he, he's still in the Marvel universe. Right. It's, uh, it's quite the clever little uh, it is. pivot. Right. Other than that, I'm making my way through Call of Duty, World War II. Oh, yeah. How is that? It's fine. I, li- I like that it's definitely a, a longer uh, a first-person shooter, World War II style than like Battlefield. Uh huh. Battlefield, I think, was just was over too quick. And I love Battlefield. They did a great job with Battlefield, but they, they I want to play it for a long time. I just don't want to play it and be done, and that's that. Yeah. So I am I am enjoying it. Um, there's not a whole lot of weapon choices. Yeah, yeah, I take that back. There is. Maybe just they're just doling him out. I don't know. But it's it's fun. I, I definitely suggest playing it, but I would suggest playing with this volume up because the, the, the base for the explosions and the gunfire and the like little rocks that, that fall, like if you fall to your face and you're trying to like, you know, drudge through the mud and rocks yeah. and stuff, you can hear actually little stuff fall around you, which is kind of cool. I like all that. So, yeah. And I will have you know, Russ, you've been on me for this. On Prime Day. Mm-hmm. Optimus Prime Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cyberpunk was 10 bucks off uh-huh. to pre-order the copy. Uh-huh. So I pre-ordered my copy. Oh, congratulations. I saved 10 bucks. Well, and so this is the regular version or the collectors or? Uh, it was the, yeah, it was the regular edition. It's normally 60 bucks. I got it for 49 99 That is some sharp shopping <laughs> if i do say so myself actually pretty much everything on my wish list and my shopping list wasn't available on on, on prime so it is what it is mm-hmm. but um yeah and i was telling you i found an 86 version uh, 86 inch version of my tv oh really wait wait what size is your tv now mine is 65 okay that yeah, same size as mine i believe yours is a 60 bro don't lie to me. Look is it a 60? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is a 60. I don't know. Uh, five is inches it a 60 matter, or a 65? Russ. I believe it's a 60. All right. Well, there you go. Well, I want an 86-inch TV now. 
It's funny how uh, that happens. Man. You feel like... I remember when we were getting my TV set up in here. And in, I remember how we were, we were just kind of blown away by like, wow, man, that's a big TV. It looks right. really good. I have since then really gotten used to the size in here. And I yes. feel like it's too small. I'm like, I need something bigger. Well, I was, remember when we were in the California house and we were watching uh, uh, Band of Brothers Pacific. Uh-huh. And you mean just the Pacific? Maybe it was just called the Pacific, yeah. But it was still, yeah, it, it corresponded. Because you have the Band of Brothers, right. which focused in, on Europe, and then you have the Pacific, which focused more on, like, the island warfare. Right, yes, yeah. right. But it was, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we were watching that in the living room with the with the, with the ceilings that are a lot higher than they are in here, and it still seemed very big. Yeah, in that room. Mm -hmm. So when we got here and put this TV in there, we sit you know relatively close to it. Let's be honest. And we're like, yes, mm. but you definitely get used to it after a while. Right? You do. Yeah. Eventually, like I said, I, I hope to get a projector set up in here because I think that's gonna that's gonna fit the bill. Yeah. Don't mistake me. I ain't getting an 86 inch version of my TV, Russ. I just had to click it and put it on my wish list because sure. that's all I'm wishing for right now. Sure. Well, and I think, too, a lot of the TV technology is getting cheaper. Right. It just seems like, I don't know, that there was kind of a waiting period there for a while. Like 4K kind of sort of came out, but it didn't have the support it needed. And so there's kind of this lollygag feeling. But now there there is proper support for 4K, and now also 8K is being ushered in. Yeah, 8K. Yeah, LG offers 8K TV. So does Samsung. Yeah. The only thing is that you can't buy any movies in 8K, nor is there really any 8K players available. Yeah. So it's. But I think in terms of the consumers, but you know, depending on how early of an adopter you are, you know, I was as well as you hmm. were or I should say R, because it's not in the past. It's in the present. But it could be in the past as well. Anyway, what I was going to say was that we didn't feel the rush to go out and buy a 4K TV the moment that they were available. And I think that that is doing us a service just because... Doing us a salad. Well, I think it's just... It, it's, it makes sense, because anytime there's a new type of technology that comes out for televisions, the prices are just ridiculous. I mean, they're, they're like 10 grand for the TV, where if you were to wait for a while, you can get that same television for like 1500 or less. It just, you know, you just need to be patient and wait for the technology to get cheaper and that sort of thing. So I think that that's, I'm, I find myself in this really nice pattern where now that the prices of 4K TVs have dropped considerably, AK is around the corner, but there's this kind of perpetual pattern that's going on where now the AKs are coming out, there isn't any kind of real support system in place. We don't have any kind of digital, to my knowledge anyway, we don't have any kind of like digital content that is taking advantage of the 8K platform. None of the video games are doing it. In fact, they just started supporting 4K. So we'll have to see. I mean, there, there is a chance that perhaps Microsoft and Sony will include 8K with their new systems. But at this point, they've really dumped quite a bit of the, the specs on those new systems that are coming. And I don't... I don't know. I would be kind of surprised if all of a sudden they go, oh, yeah, we support 8K2 just because the hardware architecture is probably optimized for 4K. Right. Well, plus two. You have the 1080 Progressive on this size TV already. And then you have 4K, which is already four times the resolution in the same perimeter. And so that already looks good, too. And then you, you're going to multiply that again. You're going to double it with the same perimeter type, you know, size TV. You're you're not really necessarily going to see 8K resolution until you expand that picture bigger. Right. So I just think it's going to become a little bit slower adoption of 8K for a while. Anyway, but that's a conversation for another day. Indeed. Is there anything else, Steve, or should I just dive in? You know, Russ, just uh, just put on your 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 swim trunks. Okay. Grab your knees, take a big jump, cannonball right in. I, uh, you know me very well. <laughs> I'm going to make a splash. 
Oh, man. So I've been looking forward to telling you all about this trip, Steve. And now I'll sit back and be quiet. No. (laughs) I was going to (laughs) say, I want to encourage you to, like, if you have any questions, just, you know, pipe up and ask. um, Just because I know that there is going to be quite a bit to go through with this. and And so definitely, you know. Okay, you flew in. You got there. Did it did it feel like Ah, oh, I remember this. This is home. I this it feels great to be back. So it's interesting that you say that because Yes, it is interesting that I said that. It is. Yes. It's you know, you, yes. you don't say mm. too many interesting things, but well, that was interesting to you. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> very offended by that right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh but when it came to the okay, first of all, the flight. The flight was fantastic. Really? Yes. No screaming kids like like playing with your earlobes while you're flying there with no. the parents ignoring him? Not at all. It was one of the best flights I have been on in quite some time. And first of all, the flight was not full. It was not completely sold out. Both Leslie and myself got our own rows. Oh. So we just chilled. We just, you know, just enjoyed our, our extra space and... No turbulence, no delays, nothing. I mean, we got into San Diego and it was fantastic. So I do, before I go in any further on this, I want to be able to give um, a special shout out to Charlene and Jason, who are friends of our good old friend Brad. And they were the ones who made this possible because initially when I had tried to sign up for an SDCC badge, I was only granted... Thursday and Sunday. And for those who don't know, Comic-Con begins on Wednesday evening, which is preview night. It goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And those are pretty much all day long. It's like 9.30 to 6 or 7 p.m. So they actually, well, you know, Charlene specifically, she um, has access to getting a professional badge for the convention. And apparently when you have that, you also have the option. I think they, they give you two additional guest badges if you want to have uh, folks from like your company or friends of yours or family or whatever, you can do that. Apparently one of, the, one of the people was not able to go and so she had an extra badge. And so Bradley ended up orchestrating this thing where I was able to get the uh, extra professional guest badge, which allowed me to go for the entire duration from preview night onward. And so I'm very thankful for that. Very gratitude oriented, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm, 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 I suppose a better way of saying that is just, I'm just grateful, Steve. How about just thank you? Absolutely. A big thank you to Charlene and Jason for making that happen. He made me a very happy man, which was uh, just super cool. And, of course, it was great to run into um, Brad's lovely wife, Teresa, as well as some friends of ours, Chris and Candice, who we have not seen for like five years. It's been a while. Did you remember the homie handshake? Uh, No, I just goosed him. (laughs) (laughs) Remember like it was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. (laughs) (laughs) What was crazy was that the the temperature in Dallas was 102 degrees Ah, the day that we left, plus that nasty humidity. We step off the plane. And by the way, the plane was the type where you had to, like, get out of the plane outside and walk into the airport. Yep. Steve, it was a balmy 74 degrees with little to no humidity when I stepped (sighs) off that plane in the middle of July. It really is. It's just amazing. <laughs> it reminds me of of, of Lewis uh, Black doing his impression of the weatherman in San Diego. So, Lewis, how's yeah. the weather today? Uh, uh, nice. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some Lewis Black. So we get there, and what's crazy is, at first, I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to get my bearings. <coughs> Excuse me. And um nice. But then all of a sudden I see the convention center and I see the decorations. I see the different uh companies getting their their booths and stuff set up outside cuz by this time there are a lot of companies that have join the party, so to speak, but there's no more room within the conference for them to be able to set their 
their booths up. And these booths, when I say booth, I'm using that as very loosely just because the outside activities are pretty epic by comparison. So you have a lot of different entertainment companies that they'll have like pieces of swag or whatever to give away. Like if you um, decide you want to participate in some sort of obstacle course that they put together that is thematic to whatever IP they have, like the Simpsons or something like that. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you just get to make some fun memories and you get a little prize at the end for deciding to participate. It's pretty cool. But anyway, it was super cool to get there. We um, met up with Bradley and uh, we were just trying to get, like I said, we were getting our bearings. We got our, our badges and stuff. And Wednesday night, was when I I was actually the only one in our group who had preview night. So uh, I felt very special for that. And I had a few things that I completely prioritized for Wednesday because the preview night is only from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. So I had basically three hours. Now, you would think to yourself, Steve, well, three hours is a considerable amount of time. It's a lot of previews. It's a lot of time. Well... When you go to the SDCC, three hours goes by in the blink of an eye. It's crazy because the convention itself is so big and there's so much stuff going on and you're having to find where everything is. It's, it's amazing how the time just goes by, just lickety split. So the things that I was wanting to focus on, there are three things mainly. One was I wanted to go to Art Germ, you know, Stanley Art Germ Lau. I also had some prints by Mondo that I wanted to try and score as well as um, some LPs that they had on, on display there. Did you have a chance to look at what Mondo was showing? Uh, a little bit. Yes. Like the, all the posters and stuff. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. What was crazy was that like, okay, for, for me personally, um, so back in like 2012, 2013, 2014, right around there, um, I was really into a lot of what Mondo was selling. They had a lot of different prints that just really interested me. There were several that I wasn't able to get. And then all of a sudden they took a different direction with a lot of their products that didn't really interest me. They still sold well and everything else, but for just my taste, I just wasn't as into it. And so I started to just kind of back off a bit and, and that's fine. But this year was the first time where all of a sudden they started previewing what they were going to be selling. And I was like, whoa, this is make, this is kind of a return back to more my flavor. And so when I got in, I immediately went over to Mondo and it was chaos, Steve. No doubt, right? It's pure chaos. Right. Mondo is, a, is a, just a, an extremely popular company within the pop culture crowd. And they had some heavy hitters on display. They had a Jim Lee... Batman hush print that was it was basically from when the he did that that main cover and you probably haven't seen it I'm not sure if you have or not but it has several of the the Batman characters on the cover it's really popular you you may recognize it if you ever saw it they had that one for sale on Wednesday night and actually before I go any further Steve Mondo had a schedule where they only dropped certain prints and LPs and other like products and stuff on certain days. So you had to really be Johnny on the spot to try and get what you're trying to get. So with that in mind, preview night had the Jim Lee print. It had another print that was Batman as well. And after the show here, I'll, I'll uh, if you're interested, I'll show, uh, well, I'll show it to you at some point because it's all wrapped up right now in my poster tube. But there was that. And then there were also three LPs. One was an LPs, you know, like like old school records. Are you familiar with how they do their products with the LP side of things? No. Okay. So Mondo, in a pretty shrewd move, is um, they they have decided to enter into the LP market where they'll have a designer recreate the art for the outside of an LP. You know, LP is a record. It's just like you, it's like the old school record type of deal. And records have really come back into vogue lately. And people have, and I think we've talked a little bit about this on the show about how when you have certain mediums that 
go by the wayside. It's like, you know, like CDs or cassette tapes or whatever. There's a certain period of time that goes by before all of a sudden you get kind of a, this feeling of nostalgia and you kind of like being able to collect that stuff again or listen to it. And I think records are at that point where it's more of like this really neat kind of artistic vintage type of thing to have. And so what's really cool is that they have redone the art on both the record as well as the, the cover art. And they're, and, but they're, they're not just doing it for like just any records. Like they, they hand pick like soundtracks to movies or video games. It's really cool. Or even TV shows and stuff. I don't know. It, it really matches nicely with the, like the kind of the pop culture scene. So they had a who frame Roger rabbit, a blade runner in 2049 and a metal gear solid gray Fox hmm. uh, records on there. So what was crazy was I, I made a beeline for that particular booth and the line was just so long. They had already capped it. They have this thing where they have like people who hold these signs. It says line capped. And what that means is that no one else is, they're not taking any more people on there because they have too many people that are in line, that sort of thing. So I thought, Oh, this is typical Mondo. I can't like get anywhere. So I decided, okay, I'm not going to wait around here. I'm going to see what else I can do. Cause again, I only had three hours. So wait, you get to preview night. No, this is preview night. Oh, I thought you meant like previews and like movie previews or previews of, of like no. other stuff, not like just art. No, 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 no. So preview night, they call it preview night because it allows certain people who have access to preview night. Mm. It gives, it literally gives the early attendees access. early access. Okay. It's a sneak okay. peek so of what the floor has to offer. Preview of what's to come from the show and believe or me the floor or the showcase exactly and that's one of the things about it is that like it's really from a strategy point of view it's great to be able to score a preview night because then you're that much more ready for the rest of the week whereas folks who don't have it have to play catch up like for instance if they come in on thursday they're kind of disoriented they're trying to figure out just what the heck is going on whereas you kind of already have a like layout of the land right and let me tell you, Steve, in a world like SDCC, you're going to need all the help you can get. One of these days, I want to take you there, Steve. Hmm. You're going to be overwhelmed. Okay. I Dare I say, you will probably be in the fetal position due to the overwhelming nature and glory that is SDCC. I'm just going to go swimming with the seashells. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when the main event happens. I'm going to be at the beach. Yeah, that's, and see, that's the thing, is that at SDCC, there are main events happening all the time. Oh, man. Simultaneously. Oh, my goodness. And I think that's the biggest thing about SDCC over other Comic Cons is that it is physically impossible to be able to actually see everything that they have to offer versus other comic cons that are smaller where it's like, okay, you walk in, you get kind of an idea of what's happening and who's there. And you can just at your leisure decide what you want to do. That's not the case here at all. Steve. I'll take your word for it. I think I could get around everywhere going, okay, that's over there. Okay. That's over there. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Got it. All right. And then maybe not explore it all the way, but I mean, I'm going to, I can kind of get the parameters of where is what around. And then, um, four hours later, got a map in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, that the two of us are able to go next year because I really want to know what you think. I want to see how you are in that type of environment. It's just, it's going to be interesting. So anyway, back to preview night. So I see that the line is Captain Mondo. I decide, okay, I'm going to make a run over to Art Germ because he tends to really get a long line going and everything else and, and sells through quite a bit of his prints. And he had both new prints as well as a new sketchbook. And so I got over there and sure enough, there was already a line. However, it wasn't too bad. I was able to get in at a decent spot and I was glad I did because literally like 30 seconds after I got in line, all of a sudden this huge line formed behind me for Art Germ as well. So I was able to go in there, made my selection of the various prints and I got all kinds of just awesome prints that he's done recently of Final Fantasy characters, of Overwatch characters, 
of even I even got Elsa and Cinderella because my daughter wanted those. She actually saw me kind of looking over his website and she requested that. So I was like, absolutely, I will. Daddy will do what he can for you. So it was a lot of fun to be able to go through that. I uh, just check that off my my mental list, my to do, my to collect list. Speaking of which, did you get my shirts? Well, I'm going to get to that. You Steve. didn't get my shirts, did you? I'm going to get to that. Steve. So, um, so after that, I decided to make a return back over to Mondo because I want to see what was happening. So I was thinking, okay. <laughs> Surely there's something else that I can do in order to get this to work. Okay, 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 okay. On the way over there, I saw the Sideshow Collectibles booth. Oh, did you get video? I did. Oh, I now, now, I'm going to put a disclaimer in there. Oh, no. Letting you know that I was unable to get everything in there because they had a ton of statues and there was just, uh, their booth was mobbed the entire time. Did they have the latest Iron Man? They did. Oh, well, okay. okay. Oh, come on. They do bait uh, me with it. Well, no, no, no. Okay, so they so one of the one of the statues that was actually one of my favorite from the show, they had the Iron Man Mark Seven from the first Avengers movie. It was when remember how Loki throws Tony Stark out of Stark Tower? Right. Yeah. And then he had that backup come in and right. all of a sudden he was like upgraded again. Well, consequently, that's like that's actually one of my favorite Iron Man marks is the Mark Seven. They have this brand new maquette of um, there. It's from the scene where remember when the Hulk set, when Bruce Banner looks at Avenger and, or Avenger looks at Captain America and says, "I'm always angry," and then he yeah. turns to the Hulk and then right. smashes the face of that huge alien worm thing. Yeah. So remember how the worm starts bending as right. he gets hit? And then there's a, there's a part where Iron Man kind of puts on the air brakes and he says, wait a second, and he like shoots out that missile from his right. forearm. Well, they literally did a freeze frame of that moment where, where he's shooting the missile. It looks incredible. It looks so awesome. The whole base area that's below Iron Man lights up. It's like it's like this explosion that's happening below him, but the the light up effect doesn't look cheesy or cheap. Or, I mean, it looks really nice. And then of course his arc reactor is lit up. His eyes are lit up. His repulsor is lit up here. But also, you see the missile that's being launched. It's frozen in time, so it's already left like the little the little holder that holds the missile. So the missile's already going out like this, and there's like this like beginning of a smoke trail. And even that is lit up. Hmm. It looks super cool. It's a really dynamic pose. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get it, Steve. I'm, I'm letting you know right now. I'm going to, when that little puppy goes up for pre-order, I'm, uh, I'm all over it. How much, Russ? I have no idea. It was a TBD on the uh, price. Uh, $1,800. Hopefully not. Hopefully it will. Not. You, you know it's going to be. If I was a betting man, I would say it was probably going to be $900. That's my guess. We'll see how close I am. But anyway, I did. And again, I wasn't there for very long. I was kind of doing a brief scanning, just stopping to, to admire a few of the pieces and then continue making my way over to Mondo. 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 So wait, are you going to throw that up on YouTube or what? Can, oh, yeah. Can people expect to see you filming that and throwing it up on YouTube? Yes. Yeah, so I brought my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Hashtag. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was able to get footage of different things happening. So what I'm planning on doing is actually putting together just kind of like a, a SDCC highlight reel. And so you'll, it'll be a montage of just different things that are happening, whether it's sideshow collectible statues or it's just the, the fans walking the floor or the booths or even different comic book artists and celebs and stuff. I mean, it, it'll be a, a fun little thing for me to put up there. So I'll be working on that um, later this week. So, Steve. Yes. I'm walking back over to Mondo. I get to Mondo and they have this line that I kid you not is like basically five bodies thick. It's not a single file line. It's literally like you have imagine like five people standing shoulder to shoulder and then the line goes back super far. So wait, hold on. I'm lost because you said you went there and they had it capped. Now you went back 
and they don't have a cap. Now it's bigger. So yes. Oh jeez. So it's it, yeah. So it, much for structure and organization. Okay, everybody just line up. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> well, see, they were trying <laughs> to maintain some semblance of order, but again, they had so many highly sought after things that. It's just it, they were struggling quite a bit, and and actually I'll, I'll tell you what happened here in, in a minute. Um, in the the following day, however, what was happening was that so you had this long line, and then they realized they only have a finite amount of different items to sell, and they have way more people in line oh than gosh. they have stuff to sell. People, please. This is a part of the craziness that is SDCC. Is everyone's after the limited edition exclusives to Comic Con that sort of thing because they're much more valuable, and for some people, they want to flip it on eBay and make a pri- you know make a profit off it that sort of thing. So. Um, so yeah. And also Mondo has the reputation of when they, whenever they release something on their website, I mean, it's just gone like that. It's super hard to be able to, to, to collect whatever it is that you're interested in. So what they decided to do is they decided to at random, just start selecting people throughout the line and pull them over to a different line. And I didn't know what was, what the heck was going on. <laughs> Come over here to the non-exclusive stuff. Hey. <laughs> well, so like, so everyone was there and there is this one guy who just started going through and I was one of the people. He like, he's he counted me as a number, that sort of thing. He said, okay, everyone who I gave a number to come over here. And I was thinking, oh, great. What is this? So I start walking over and, the, and there's not very many. I mean, there's, I'm not sure how many he said, maybe like 50 or something like that. He said, okay, everyone with a number that that's over here in this line, you can go forward and purchase things at the booth. Everyone else, I'm sorry, we're sold out. We do not, we do not have enough to go around. You're going to have to come back tomorrow for our new, new items that we're going to release. I could not believe it. I was blown away. So I get in line. I buy the Jim Lee print. I buy the Batman, the other Batman print, which is just fantastic. I get all three of the LPs. It is amazing. I'm like, I cannot believe it. Did you all just embrace yourselves? Like, you know, a bunch of random people you don't know, all like, do like one big group hug, jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's (laughs) jumping around everything. And then you decide like you're holding hands with somebody you don't even know. And you're like, yeah, I don't hold your hand anymore. (laughs) Don't, t- don't touch me. The time has passed. Yeah. There is there is a camaraderie <laughs> among fans um, who are going to the to the con. I mean, it's it's interesting. There's right. Russ, okay. you know, if if I were to describe it, it's funny because you almost make Tim I, I want to say it's almost like temporary alliances. First of all, I love everybody who goes. Like everybody likes everybody who goes to Comic-Con. Yeah, okay. Everyone's really sure nice and polite. It's seriously one of the most polite crowds you will ever be in. Until someone cuts in line and then they just get beat up out back. Well, well, the <laughs> unfortunately you have those types of people in the world. But what's funny is though is that um there is this sort of like, like I said, there's like almost like this temporary alliance thing that happens where you have the 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 con goers that want the same thing, but they're pitted. And again, this is this is kind of the wrong way of saying it, but it's almost like they're pitted against the the booth of interest because the booth of interest only has a certain amount of stuff and they're trying to get people to keep moving and they're saying, Oh, the line is capped. We're not taking anybody else. And we're over here going like, yeah, whatever you're going to take people. We're just going to hang out. And so it, it is pretty funny, but anyway, I was super thrilled about that. So it was a very successful preview night because I got to see kind of the lay of the land. I got exactly what I what I what I was there for, which was the Mondo stuff and the, the Archerm stuff, which was great. That brings me to Thursday. Okay. Now, I had to switch hotels on Thursday because the way everything was set up, we were staying for the first couple of nights at one hotel, and then. 
because and you have to understand like when all of the, the reservations go on, there's, there's only a certain period of time that it's open. So that means everybody who's going to SDCC that needs a room is trying to reserve at the same time. It, like I said, it's chaos. So for us, we, we were having to reserve um, a room for a couple of nights at one place and then try and find another hotel to reserve the other nights that we still needed. Well, we ended up staying at a wonderful hotel called the Hotel Del Coronado. Steve, I'm here to tell you. The Hotel Del is one of my absolute favorite hotels I have ever stayed at. Hmm. It's like walking into a nice big bowl of caviar, is it, Russ? It is crazy. It is, okay, it, it's, it's, it is so unique. It's on an island that's right off the coast of San Diego. I'm liking this. They have their own private beach. Do they have their own little boat shuttle that you, they would? They take? do. They oh. have a ferry. So, well, okay. So not like a little small speed boat or something. Like well, ferry. I don't know. I, I was, <laughs> this, is my, this is my first time here. But what I do know is that they do have a ferry that shuttles people back and forth. And they also have kind of this bridge area where, you know, if you want to Uber or you have your own car or whatever, you can drive back and forth. Could you swim it if you wanted to? I imagine you probably could because the water is amazing. Hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> it is shark infested. Good luck. <laughs> Sign this insurance waiver. Have fun with that. <laughs> but I highly recommend not only to you, Steve, but to all of our listeners out there, if you go to San Diego and you are looking for a fabulous place to stay. The Hotel Dell is what I would recommend. Now, the only thing is, is that it's a little pricey. It's a little higher than uh, really what, what your, where your average hotel, <laughs> your usual B and B. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> when you go there though, I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous building. It's huge. Um, the food there is fantastic. It, I mean, really, I mean, b both Leslie and I were just impressed. It was just crazy, like, how much we enjoyed that. So if you go and you're used to staying in a, in a hostel, yeah, you're probably not going to want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> what was crazy was that when we got our room, uh, there was a certain somebody who was two doors down from us. Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse? No. I don't know. No, no, Steve. It's, it's a real person. Jim Carrey? No. But you're getting warmer. <laughs> Apparently, the Hotel Dell is a place where, especially during San Diego Comic-Con, you have quite a few of the celebrities who are in panels and stuff. Uh -huh. That's where they stay. I'm like, oh, we just want to get away. Ah, oh, there's people here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surrounded. What am I going to do? If I didn't make so much money at these comic cons, <laughs> I didn't go. Now I have laryngitis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So. Who was it? Uh, you know, I'm not even sure if you know this person or not. Did you? So have you watched The Walking Dead, Steve? Uh, I have seen it. Yes. I have not watched it all the way through. No. Is it, is it the, the sheriff dude or is it the dude with the club and the, and the, and the, or no, the bow and arrow guy, or is it, <laughs> <laughs> is it like the Asian dude who falls in love with the, the white chick who's from Friday night lights? <coughs> that was nice. Okay. So first of all, <laughs> I, the wait, dude yes with the no. crossbow. <laughs> His name is Norman Reedus, and he was there. He was at <laughs> okay. the Hotel Del. So I'm partial. I'm I'm on the right track. You're I'm on the partially right, track. right. Okay. However, he that he was not the person who was two doors down from me. Uh huh. Okay. I had so okay. To give you an idea, Just I'm say it. I'm setting it up for you, Steve. Man, killing me. I'm coming back to the hotel room with with a bunch of luggage and stuff, and I see this guy with a beard, kind of long hair. Um, I think he's got some glasses on. Anyway, he's talking to a couple of other guys, you know, their friends or whatever, and they're just hanging out outside of his door. 
And I'm trying to fumble through my pocket, trying to get my own hotel key out so I can open the door. You know, I'm kind of like halfway paying attention to them, halfway not. But I hear his voice and I and I glanced over at him. I'm thinking, why does this guy look so familiar? What the heck is like, going on here? So and you, then like, so you went up to him and asked him like, so where do you get ice around yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hi, how are you? Funny bumping into you. <laughs> yeah. You got any Advil? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm imagining it, my door open and it still just bothered me. I'm like, who is that? I'm trying to get all my stuff in. And, and at one point there's a, some like very attractive woman that comes over and oh, greets really? him and greets oh. some other people. And I like, never guessed they're doing kind of like the, the LA Hollywood, like, Oh, hello, darling. Um, oh, Eric kisses. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so I'm thinking, man, like this is, this is starting to really drive me mad. I don't know. I feel like I recognize who this I, person We is. get it, Russ. So I get inside my hotel and I close the door. And all of a sudden, it just hits me. I'm like. Like a zombie coming out of the woodwork, just like biting you in the shoulder. Well, it's just crazy because all of a sudden I realize, wait a minute. I think that person is a part of the walking dead. And what's funny was that with our badges that we got for SDCC, actually, The Walking Dead was featured. It was like the featured art on the, the front of the badge. I realized that it was Greg Nicotero. Oh, Greg, yeah. Greg Nicotero is the <laughs> makeup director. He's the one who created all of the zombie prosthetics. Oh, he's the man then, yeah. For yes. sure. Wow, yeah. This, I mean, is, that's- this is the guy who, like, before The Walking Dead, he um, did all the, the zombie stuff for, the, for that classic Day of the Dead movie. Mm-hmm. And then he went over to The Walking Dead. So all of the nasty, terrifying stuff, that's all him. So he specializes in dead. Yes, he's all about monsters. He's all about like the the decla- decaying flesh and <laughs> De- declaring, <laughs> declaring. Yeah, de- <laughs> I declare it decay. I mean, he is a master of his craft. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's it!" And because I, I was talking to to Leslie about it too, I was like, "Gosh, who is this?" And and I said, "I think that's Greg out there." And, and of course, she got excited because she has seen plenty of interviews with him where he's talking about his process of how he does. The different things. I mean, he even teaches the extras who are the zombies on the show, like how to move and how to like how to behave your, and stuff. I mean, it's drag his, your foot. His passion is zombies. I'm telling you. But did she kind of flirt with him a little bit more than you thought you would? No, like and you I thought, said, it, and you thought it was okay. I, I, th- <laughs> <laughs> no. So like my thing was, is I got the idea. Okay. I got my suitcases and stuff in the room. I'm going to use my badge. Like I'm going to pull the badge out of its little protective, sure. th- you know, whatever laminate thing is. Cause I had a Sharpie and I was going to say, how cool would it be to get his autograph right on my badge? Cause it was the walking dead. Unfortunately, I went back out there and they were gone and I didn't have the bowls. <laughs> to walk up to his door and knock on it and ask for an autograph. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. But it is fun to talk about just because, you know, you have those celebrity sightings and whatnot. So anyway, <laughs> dress up as a room service person. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I brought room you some, service. <laughs> brought you some macaroni and cheese. <laughs> you didn't order anything. <laughs> I had this fantasy going in my head of like how I could talk to him and ask, Hey, can you turn me into a zombie? Can you use me as a guinea pig? And like what, what my, my bargaining chip, this is my, uh, (laughs) my logic is I'll say, look, if you just let me sit down in your hotel room, you turn me into a zombie. I will totally walk through this hotel and scare everybody. And I, you know what? I want to believe that at least 50% of me thinks he would actually be game for that. Like if I were to you say think that, he brought all his prosthetics and the makeup and stuff with him. Uh, who yeah, knows? Geez. You know, man's an artist, Steve. They tend to bring at least some of the goodies with him. You never know. But anyway, back to Comic Con. So, uh, so anyway, that kind of blew out like the first half of the day, and so I was having to play catch up, and I I went back into Comic-Con and was looking around. I stopped by Mondo again because as you know, Steve, <laughs> what was every 15 minutes I came back. <laughs> well, again, every day they drop new <laughs> items. So it's like, I got to get back over there and see what the heck they're selling. Strangely enough, every 15 minutes, the line grew longer. 
<laughs> and thicker. <laughs> no reasoning behind it. It just started left and came back again. I just don't get it. Unfortunately, Detective Pikachu was sold out. So oh, thank goodness. Let's move on. I was going to get that for you. No. So anyway, after looking and seeing, and of course, the, they had a line. Now, what was interesting about Mondo was that because the preview night was so chaotic, they then adopted a new policy, which was they went to like this, like, you know, the ticket set that people use when they raffle something off yeah. and they give you a ticket. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. went to that type of methodology where they're like saying, okay, we have a a certain amount of tickets that represents how many customer how many customers were willing to take on at a time. And they had these time slots that they created throughout the day so that, you know, if you're like for the the 3 p.m. um slot and then you show up at 3 p.m. You have your ticket and then you can just get into a line. It's much more orderly, which I applaud Mondo for doing because then all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, this really removes a lot of the uncertainty and chaos and stuff. And if you're too late, then you're too late. You don't get a ticket. But that creates its own challenge because that means that you have to just sprint over to the Mondo booth first thing when the door is open because those tickets are gone super fast. They're gone within like the first like five minutes. So anyway, I realized that it was about time for me to make my way over to the Funko Pop booth, Steve. Oh, because that was one of the, uh, well, I don't know what, the, what do they call them. Like the, it's, it's, we'll just call it one of the events that I was confirmed for. One of the interests. I think they call it interests on their website. Anyway, I was confirmed to be able to go. And luckily, <clears throat> my, the, uh, okay, let me back up. You're losing me. Uh, I, I know. I'm trying to set this up. For you. <laughs> I, so, I, 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 so, <laughs> <laughs> so Funko has multiple time slots themselves on uh, multiple days. Okay. And they bring a bunch of products that are exclusive to SDCC. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm following you. Now, the idea is, is that you want to be among the first or at least the, the one of the early <laughs> <No>. slots. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you, you, the, the, well, the, the thinking is you want to be three quarters at the end of the line. No further, no closer. But it's, I know it sounds silly of me to say this, but what's crazy is that I, you know, we don't have any control over like, it's not like, oh, like for instance, Mondo, like if you get there with enough time, then you can say, oh, I will take the 11 a.m. slot or I will take the 3 p.m. slot, whatever it is. Funko, that's not the case at all. Funko, if you are lucky enough to, to get your token chosen during the whole selection process, I mean, the only kind of control that you have is you can select, oh, like I want like, you know, if you're interested, I'll take, I'll put a token into this Funko time slot and into this Funko time slot and this fun Funko time slot. So Anyway, I was really fortunate to be one of the, the early ones. And that meant that by the time I got up there, there were very few that were sold out, which is a very, very good thing, Steve. Unfortunately, the Funko that I really wanted was sold out when I got up there. Invader so, Zim? Uh, no. Uh, no, I have the Invader Zim. No. Oh. It was the brand new Sith Trooper from the coming Star Wars movie, Steve. Okay. The Red Sith Trooper. Okay, Russ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I was able to purchase everything I wanted on the list. What's really nice is that they went through and they had this kind of checklist that you're able to choose which ones you want as the line's moving. Now, these types of things are great because in the past, it has been really, really difficult to navigate your way through the Funko booth because there's just so much going on. It's a big deal to talk about this kind of stuff just because it just makes the experience that much smoother, that much more, that much more enjoyable. Now, they were also strict about people who didn't, uh, who, who didn't have like a, um, a confirmation to be able to go in because apparently people were going up to folks who did and were offering them money and stuff to get to hook them up with like certain Funkos. They straight up had a security team that worked directly for Funko that were preventing people from approaching the people in line. It was, pre it was pretty hardcore. <laughs> and there was one person in particular who actually managed to talk to me. He started talking to me and he's like, Hey, I don't know if you're going to be getting this one over here, but would you mind 
Uh, if you're not getting it, could you get it for me? And all of a sudden the conversation got cut off because one of the security guys rushed over. He's like, get it back. You're back. You don't talk about it. You know? And, and, uh, I looked at him, uh, cause he was back and you could tell he was like kind of despondent and you know, cause you could just tell he was like a Funko fan who didn't get a confirmation. And I'm, I'm a Funko fan. Like I like Funko, but I'm not like one of those like really hardcore fans. Right. I gave him the look, Steve. Did you? I did. What kind of look did you give him? I got, I gave him the, I got you look. I got mm-hmm. your back. Those types of stories, um, I think are just rewarding and fun in their own way to look back on. Like kind it's of pay it forward. Yeah. yeah. Like a pay it forward kind of deal. It's exactly what it is where like, I don't know. Well, well, well and it comes back, it comes back to me later on. Right. Steve. So d- Speaking of paying, did he pay you or did he just go? Oh, yeah, that? No, no. Okay, I no, 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 no. He 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 was um he was awesome. Yeah, I got, all I only have is five bucks. Is that okay? No, no, no. <laughs> no, he actually he actually gave me a tip. He actually oh. he hooked me up with a little extra thank you. Well, cash. I would I would figure that would be the case. I mean yeah. you did him a favor. But again, I mean it's just it's really I don't know. That to me, I, I feel compelled to talk about this, which is that it goes back to that camaraderie spirit of San Diego Comic-Con where you have people who are fans of all kinds of different things. And sometimes, unfortunately, you have people who are super fans of something and they're not able to actually get in. And so if there are certain opportunities that, you know, you can allow yourself to be in that situation, it's just as satisfying on, on that side of just being able to, to be almost like, uh, you know, that, that cool dude. Cause I'm not that cool. <laughs> so it's, it's fun to be able to, to be in that position to be, to be cool for about two seconds. <laughs> so anyways, dear, uh, where was I? There's just so much on my plate here. Now I, when I left Funko, I all of a sudden found Andy Park's booth. I thought you were saying Andy Circus for a minute. No, 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 no. I don't know if you know who Andy Park is, Steve. Andy Park is the lead. He's the art lead on the Marvel visual development team. Yeah, I know who he is. You do? Follow him on uh, Twitter. Good I'm, for you. I'm just kidding. I'm not actually. I don't. Oh, you don't. Know. I, I, I just. <laughs> I can't. I can't pull you like that. I, I can't, I can't yeah. do it without that. No. Sorry, sorry. You really should follow him though, because he's a super talented guy. He worked in the comic book business uh, before going into video games for a while. He did a lot of the concept work on the Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider video games. Uh huh. And since that time, he joined up with the Marvel visual, um, excuse me, the the Marvel visual development team. And so like, for instance, like he designed the Ant-Man costume and the Wasp costume. And um, he's worked on several of the other wardrobes and stuff throughout the MCU movies. And so it was great to be able to go over there and say, hi, I mean, he and his wife were sitting there and he he was selling um, artwork and that sort of thing over there was really, really cool. And it was great just to be able to, to talk to him a bit about his process and just what all he's got going on and that sort of thing. And so I, Steve, I ended up uh, commissioning him no. for an Iron Man drawing. Oh. Now, he's going to do it at home. He, he said um, all of his commissions he's not doing at the show because he's too busy with oh, yeah, selling right. everything else and yeah. everything else. However, um, he took down my contact information, my email, like his wife got all the info. And uh, I'm not sure exactly when it's going to happen, but I already paid him and everything else. So it's all, everything is all good to go. But I'm very excited to see what kind of sketch I receive from him. I think that's going to be really, really cool. And I asked him for an Iron Man sketch. And so we'll, we'll see like what he decides to do. I did ask him to have it um, be a, in a dynamic pose. It's going to be something Michael Jackson-ish. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man grabbing his crotch. You're like, right. what the heck is happening? You must have been listening to the <laughs> to the bad album. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you let your music influence you a little too much while you were drawing this here. <laughs> anyway, so after that, I then receive a text from my friend Candace. If you recall, Chris and Candace were at the Candace. show. And Candace 
was in the Mondo line. Oh, here we go. The word of the night is Mondo <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, Steve. She texted me because I was texting the group and saying, oh man, Mondo has this new type of policy in place. It's ticket only. I didn't get a ticket. Did anybody else get a ticket? And Chris apparently got a ticket and he gave it to Candace because he had a conflicting um, activity or show or event, something he was at. So Candace was in line for it. So, and, and you have to understand, Steve, the location of these places are literally at the opposite ends of the convention center. That's good for you. So Mondo's at one end. Funko is at the other end. Clear, like literally, it, it, its booth is up against the back facing wall. So I had to go all the way there. Now, remember, I have a heavy backpack on and I'm carrying a huge Funko bag filled with 12 Funkos in it. And I've got... Um, another bag that is a, it's a Comic-Con bag that they give, they hand out to all the Comic-Con goers. So, I mean, I'm kind of bogged down with crap. Well, when I'm talking to Andy, Steve, my Comic-Con bag strap breaks. Oh. And so now I'm having to hold both of these bags <laughs> that are filled with stuff in my hands instead of like having it on my back. Oh my gosh, dude, like talk about a workout and you're having to navigate through hundreds of thousands of people all the way back to the other side. And here comes the guy who you helped out and he's got a big roll of duct tape <laughs> and he like makes some fabricated like duct tape handle for your bag and comes at, saves the day. No, 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 Steve. No, no, no. no but however... I finally way. make it to the line where Candace is standing in, you know, greet her, say hi, see how things are going and stuff. And <laughs> I talked to her about how I, one of the things I, I realized I forgot to buy the pins, the colored pencils. No, no, no. Okay. Pins. <laughs> Remember, how, remember uh, last episode like, where we're talking the, the flare? Fl yeah. Oh, come on, Russ. Steve. Russell. Steve. They had Transformer pins. Uh-huh. They had Optimus Prime. Uh-huh. They had Megatron. Uh-huh. They even had, I believe it was Bumblebee, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. I have to double check. Uh-huh. They had Spider-Man. Uh-huh. They also had Avengers stuff. I figured, as I guess. Yeah. I didn't think Avengers stuff would be anywhere at SDCC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how facetious you are. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had forgotten to get these pins the night before, and I was just killing myself. And so luckily, Candace was in line, and I was like, oh, can you hook me up with these different things? And she said, yeah. She also looked, and she saw that my bag had had just like snapped mm -hmm. get this so warner brothers are they're the ones who actually create the bags for all of the the sdcc goers and so they also create the art that goes on the back of the bags one of the fun traditions of comic-con is that you can like you know either keep your bag or you can trade it with someone else if you would like prefer um, a different design over the other. And this year in particular, because it was celebrating 50 years of San Diego Comic-Con, Warner Brothers, I think they designed either 23 or 26 different bags. So like you had ones of like Batman or you had Supergirl or, I mean, just an absolute ton. Like there were different TV shows, different movie characters, video games. I mean, it was crazy. Anyway, Candace sees it and she actually has an extra Warner brothers bag that has the exact same design as what my bag has. And so she just gave it to me. So I was able to like transfer all my goods from my old broken bag into the new bag. Lickety split. I mean, how about them apples? Oh, that's crazy, Russ. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. I'm telling you, Steve, it's just, it's, it's interesting to see how the stars a line. And I'm trying to think of if there was something else in particular that was going on. Where was your wife in all this, Russ? 
So she had no interest in going to the con <laughs> itself. She, she just wanted to stay away from me and everything the entire trip. <laughs> She's like, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I do not breathe the same air I breathe. No, she really, mommy needed some downtime. Mm -hmm. And mommy got exactly that. She got downtime. She was hanging out at the Hotel Dell and she loved it. She was on the beach. She was collecting sand dollars. She was just hanging out on like the, like those chase lounges that are out there. She was sipping she was, on Mai Tais. Yeah. She was reading books that she brought. She was enjoying, like our room had this really um, big balcony that was in the shade and it overlooked kind of like the center garden area thing. And, Oh, it was so lovely. Like you could even have the door to your, your hotel stay open and just the nice cool breeze was just blowing in. <laughs> so people look at you envious. Oh man, what do you do for a living that you got to stay at there? <laughs> You're like, oh, it's laid off, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> Life's been good. To me. <laughs> so anyway, that whole thing worked out really well with uh, with Candace being there. So thank you again to Candace. Uh, she hooked me up with the uh, the Transformer pins, a Spider Gwen pin, and an Iron Man Thanos gauntlet pin. So I thought that was super cool. Now by this point, Steve, I realized that Art Germ was doing his signing. Art Germ got sick. Hence the germ. <laughs> So what ended up happening was, well, okay, let me back up. Oh. On preview night, remember I got all those different yeah, uh, yeah, 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 those yeah, prints yeah, from him yeah, and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I had brought with me my Catwoman comics that he did the covers of because mm -hmm. I was wanting him to autograph the, all the different covers. Well, he wasn't signing anything on preview night. He said, nope, you have to come back tomorrow at 3 p.m. He's like, I I'm signing from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And that's it. So after I was in line with Candace to go through all that, I then all of a sudden had to book it. And where do you think Art Germ was, Steve? The, the opposite side of where you were. Exactly. He yeah. was back where Funko was. And at this point, it was like 350, 355. Like it was almost over. And I was like, oh my gosh. So now I had to run all the way back the opposite side of the conference. I was going to say when I first saw you today that um, you look great. You know? uh, oh, thank you. You look like you uh, got some exercise, lost a few, um, <laughs> a little dehydrated perhaps, but uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I walked a ton. Over the last five days. <laughs> Come back, Russ has a six pack. Hey, Steve. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> Whoa. Who are you? <laughs> six pack, tan. Even more hairs for some reason <laughs> yeah, on top really. of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your hair goes back. Your teeth are all blistering white. <laughs> wow. <laughs> San Diego was good for me, Steve. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> yeah. Conquer the world. <laughs> so anyway, I get back to where Art Germ is and... Um, you know, the, he, of course, he has his line and everything else. And so it gets to be my turn. I then walk forward with my, my comic books in hand and he starts to sign them. Steve, I was the last person that he was signing for because there were people who were coming up even after me, like as I was sitting there and having him autograph, he said, nope, no more. That was it. That's how close it was. <laughs> Nope, don't pay me anymore. I've got enough money today. Uh, it, it's crazy. Like, and he he ran a really tight ship this year, Ooh. and so it was. I mean, again, I, I could not believe my lucky stars. I was like, oh my gosh, I got lucky again. I cannot, and that's just it's cutting it so close. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. So I was very pleased, very happy to have that taken care of. As I leave Art Germ, Steve. I found Ryan Minerding. Does that name ring a bell to you, Steve? It rings a very, very, very small bell in my brain. Ryan Minerding is 
the head of Marvel Visual Development. He is the main head honcho who's responsible for all of the concept designs of like the different wardrobe and costumes the characters wear. I mean, he, he's an amazing artist to like all the different suits of Iron Man and that sort of thing. So he's Kevin Feige's BFF, basically. He, pretty much. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And he had a booth there and it was amazing. I got to, um, he had a couple of ladies that were working there who later on I found out one was Allie, who was just like just the sweet girl who is, I believe she's a production assistant or production coordinator that works, um, within the Marvel teams and stuff. And then the other, I would think was his wife who was just this really nice gal as well. And so it was great because I was able to, um, also talk to Ryan and just, thank him honestly just just for all of the work that he and his team have done and just the the major impact that he's had just with pop culture as well as just like talking about how like when you and I were younger and how the whole comic book thing was more of like a closeted thing like it was it was nowhere near as mainstream as it is today yeah oh, i'm here to tell you steve when I, before I was even talking to him, I was talking to the two ladies and I, and they were saying, Oh, well, what, you know, is there anything that we, that you'd like, or, you know, what can we do for you kind of thing? And I was saying, well, you know, I was hoping I can get a commission from Ryan. I was hoping one of you would rub my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and, and they were saying they're like, well, I'm not really sure if he, if he's willing to, that he tends to be rather selective about who he does commissions for and that sort of thing. At that, not, at that point, I'm sorry to cut you off. Right? Oh, that's okay, Steve. At that point, did you bring out like a $1 bill and say, well, what if you ask my friend right here? What's he going to say? Yeah, I bust out with a knight of the Roxbury. <laughs> what, what about, about George Washington? Yeah, what about and Abraham George Lincoln? Washington. Okay, he wants to say hello to you. What do you got to <laughs> little lonely he wants to join his buddies. <laughs> No, didn't do anything like that. But um, and, and even his wife was talking about how um, he is so in demand for his commissions that he actually is probably um, he has probably three years worth of commissions um, that he can do, which is just I mean, it, honestly, it doesn't surprise me at all because he's a fantastic artist. I've actually purchased a, a couple of his prints in the past. And um, so, you know, I was able to speak with him and he was. Uh, really gracious and accepted to do a commission for me. So I will be having both a commission from Ryan and from Andy. Um, and it just, I honestly don't care when they're done. Um, I just, I feel just over the moon excited that I get to have a personalized commission coming from both of these gentlemen. So it's, it was very, very cool. And, um, I actually ended up purchasing another print that he had. It's super cool. I'll have to show you um, after we're done recording this, but really, really amazing artwork. So it brings me to the, the final thing that happened on this day. And remember, this is all Thursday. Mm -hmm. This is Thursday, Steve. I stopped off at the Top Cow Productions booth, Steve. AKA the company of Mark Silvestri. Okay. Uh, I think I saw you post a little photo. Uh -huh. I did. So he wasn't there on Thursday, mm. but his crew was. And so I was talking with them a bit and was, and I was asking again, you know, I was in this, like this commission mode. So I was, I said, you know, I went on to his website and it looked like you guys had a list of people for commissions and it said it was closed. And they said, yeah, that's correct. There have been people who have already signed up. And so his commission list is, is closed. So I started looking around and I actually bought a few comic books that had been graded by the CGC. Oh, cool. And they are cyber force. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And so it was super cool. They they had already been autographed by Mark Silvestri, which is super cool. And they're like these variant editions and stuff. So I was I was like, yeah, dude, I'll tell you know, I ended up buying like five of them. So that was really, really cool. And then I just 
I was talking to one, this one lady and I, unfortunately I didn't get her name, but I was talking to her more about the whole commission list. And I said, at one point I asked her, I said, is there a wait list for the commission list? And she kind of looked at me and she said, we can do that. Sure. And so she pulls out the list that they had printed out of all the various folks who had already signed up and had given detailed information as what they wanted. And she said, here, write your name down on this list and we will see, you know, Mark may be able to fit you in on Sunday. So we'll see how this whole thing plays out. So I took that as a possible foot in the door crack opening of possibility. I said, okay, let's, let's do this. You don't know unless you ask. Absolutely. It's a, it was a very good example of just, you know, trying to see what kind of opportunities are out there, seeing, uh, you know, if, if the door is truly shut or not. And so anyway, it was super cool to be able to talk to them. And I think I'm going to I'm going to stop it right there just because there is still a ton to talk about with regards to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, Steve. So what do you think about what I've been going over so far? Sounds like you and the wifey wife got exactly what you wanted, what you set out for. Looks like you were all smiles and she was all smiles. Looks like you uh, got, well, we haven't even talked about R&R yet, but the location was great. The locale was great. The company was great. The organization was great. It was. I mean, it was such a stupendous trip. And I don't use that word very often, Steve. I can tell even your food is popping up to say hello because it's so excited about what I had to say. (laughs) But, I mean, it was amazing to see the the entire trip itself. I really couldn't have asked for a better experience overall. Uh So, I mean, anyway. (laughs) <laughs> that ra- that wraps up this episode yeah, of Joy Guys. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I could keep talking about this forever. Oh, make sure you tune in next week when we go into part two of my Comic Con experience for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm and consider becoming a monthly contributor. You'll get exclusive perks and early access to the show, not to mention it really helps us continue doing what we love to do. Also, you can follow us on social media and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. Last but not least, search Joygasm TV on Twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll see you next week. <laughs>